Hello, everyone. My name is Wei Niu. I am a PhD student from the College of William and Mary. It's my great honor to present our work here, PET DNN, achieving real-time DNN execution on mobile devices with pattern-based weight pruning. This is a joint work among William and Mary, Northeastern University, and the University of Southern California. First, let's look at some background information about DNN execution. Nowadays, machine learning is becoming increasingly popular. Deep neural networks have emerged as a fundamental element in machine learning applications due to its high accuracy and excellent scalability. Many applications such as image classification, object detection, and the neural network pro neural language processing highly re rely on DNA models. On the other hand, the chips of mo mobile devices have become more and more powerful in the past decades. They usually have multiple processors with varied processing capabilities. We show a Snapdragon 845 example on this slide. Its CPU and GPU have their own hierarchical cache system, and they share the same system memory. However, running a large DN on mobile devices in real time is still challenging. Take VGG16 as an example. It has more than 500 megabyte para parameters. TVM even takes over 200 million seconds to inference just one image. It's clearly far from a real time execution which is 30 frames per second. Now let's move to the motivation part. There are several DNA acceleration approaches. For the algorithm level, one of the most innovation techniques is DNA model compression. It can result in significant reduction in the model size. The computation is also reduced with the reduction of the weight. From the framework level, there are also several end-to-end -end DNA acceleration frameworks targeting mobile platform. For example, TVM, TensorFlow Lite, and the Alibaba MNN. However, these approaches still have some limitations. There are two main kinds of weight pruning, non-structure non pruning and the structure pruning. Non-structure pruning can achieve a very high model compression rate and good accuracy. However, because it prunes weight at arbitrary locations, it incurs heavy control flow instructions during the model execution. About the framework, this, uh, there are some popular framework in both industry and academia, like TVM, TFLI, and Alibaba MNN. But this framework do not support sparse DNA execution some other efforts explore model compression to accelerate the DNA execution. However, they either require new hardware support or do not support target mobile platform. So we will not discuss them here. In this paper, we propose pad DNN. It mainly consists of three contributions. A new pattern-based pruning with fine-grained pruning patterns inside the coarse-grained coarse -grain structures. And we also propose a, a, a design an end-to-end -end framework to efficiently execute DNN model on mobile devices and a, a set of compiler and code generation-based optimization. Finally, we compare pad DNN with three state-of-art end-to-end frameworks. Let's look at our first contribution. We call our pruning technique pattern-based pruning because we set several fixed patterns during our weight pruning. Here are some, are some sample patterns for three by three convolutional kernel. At the beginning, a kernel consists of nine by nine, which is nine, uh, three by three, which is nine elements. After pruning, each kernel will have four non-zeros in a certain pattern. Our pattern-based pruning has two dimensions. One is intraconvolution kernel pattern pruning, and another one is 
interconvolutional kernel connectivity pruning. To get a pattern sparsity, we prune a fixed number of weight in each convolutional kernel. To get a connectivity sparsity, we cut the relative unimportant connections between certain inputs and the output channels, which is equivalent to the removal of corresponding kernels. We next explain the detailed procedures of our pattern-based pruning. First, we need a pre-trained model. Next, we need to determine the number of patterns in our candidate pattern set. If the candidate pattern set is too large, it is more challenging to generate efficient codes, thereby affecting performance. If it is too small, we do not get enough flexibility, which may lead to accuracy degradations. Finally, we retrain, our, retrain the model with an ADMM-based approach. Our output is a compressed model with varied patterns. Please refer to our paper if you would like to learn more details. The, next, let's look at the second contribution, compiler-based code optimization and, gen, and generation. This figure shows a system overview of PadDNN. Left part is our pattern-based pruning. We have talked about it. After getting the pruner model, PadDNN convert the model into computational graphs and applies multiple graph-based graph optimization. As this is not our major contribution, we won't discuss it here. Next is the execution code generation stage. This stage includes several major co components, a high-level, fine-grained DNN layer-wise representation, field kernel reorder, load redundancy, redundancy elimination, and automatic parameter tuning. We extract layer-wise representation from the computational graph, which, include, which includes detailed kernel pattern and connectivity-related information. For example, the pattern type presented in this layer, the pattern order in each filter, and the tuning related parameters. Next, let's talk about the major optimization. First, the field kernel reorder. This is the key step in compiler optimization. It is designed to achieve the best of instruction level and thread level parallel parallelism. In field kernel reorder, when a pattern-based model is trained, patterns and connections of all kernels are already known, which means all computation patterns are fixed before deploying the model for inference. We can collect this pattern information from layer-wise information extraction. Uh, our basic idea of field kernel reorder is that we organize the field with similar kernels together to improve inter-thread parallelism, and then order the kernels with the same pattern in a filter together to improve intra-thread parallelism. The left sample code, code shows how we compute a con convolutional operator before field kernel reorder. It requires heavy branch operations due to this switch. After reorder, we can put the kernel with the same pattern together and execute one pattern after another. This can eliminate all execution branches. Similar filters can also be executed by different threads simultaneously, this thus reducing thread divergence. Now it's pattern storage. We store DNN weights in a novel compact format called FKW, compared with existing compact data format like CSR, FKW is a higher level and resulting in less overhead. We use four extra data structure to, to store the sparse information. Two of them are filter level and others are kernel level. The key advantage of FKW is that it, uh, is that it leverages the pattern information to organize the kernel storages and support the later branchless DNN execution. 
other compact data formats cannot, cannot support this. Please refer to our paper for more details about this format if you are interested in this. The load redundancy elimination is based on the field kernel reordering. We know that in DNA execution, the data access pattern of input output is decided by the non-zero element of each kernel. Therefore, we can generate data access code with this information for each kernel pattern. In this way, it can directly access the valid input data that is associated with the non-zero elements in a pattern-based kernel. So, in kernel-level le load redund redundant elimination from this figure, we can see when we compute two rows of output, the gray row will participate in the computation twice. In traditional irregular pruning, we don't know whether blue one and the red two are in the same color. So it, need to, it needs to load the gray row twice during computation. But in PADDNN, as we already know the computation of the non-zero elements in the kernel, so we only need we only need load once. And uh, for the field level load redundant elimination, when we do the computation of two outputs in different output channels, field level load, load redundant elimination can also bring considerable benefits. From, from the, this figure, we can see the same reason applies here. As we don't know whether two kernels in different filters are the same, so we need to load the gray input feature map twice. In PADDNN, we can utilize the permutation of the non-zeros element in different kernels and only load them once too. Next, let's look at our evaluation path. This section evaluated the execution performance of PADDNN by comparing it with three frameworks. We used three mobile platforms Snapdragon 8, 855 and 845 and the Kirin 980. And we use VGG 16, ResNet 50, and MobiNet V2 and train them on different datasets, ImageNet and the CIFA 10. We also evaluated the experiment on CPU and GPU separately. First, we evaluated the impact of the pattern count selection on both accuracy and execution time and 3.6 time uniform connectivity pruning rate. As increasing pattern counts, the accuracy increased slightly. However, the performance drops quickly. So, so our evaluation select eight patterns that the result in ideal performance with the negligible accuracy loss. Now, we show our own device inference speed results in this slide. We use a Qualcomm Snapdragon 855 mobile platform. We compare PADDNN with different acceleration frameworks. They are TVM, TFLight, and Alibaba MNN. To ensure fairness, all frameworks use the same DNN models, and all baseline frameworks are fully optimized. We can see that our result outperform baseline results significantly. For VGG16 in here, which can outperform TFLight by 50, 15 times and 7 times on CPU and GPU respectively on ImageNet datasets. This slide reports the speed up of the version with optimizations of, over the version without any optimizations on each unique convolutional layer of VGG16 on CPU and GPU. Interestingly, load redundant elimination contributes, contributes more speed up to CPU, while reorder bring more benefits on GPU than on CPU, because GPU's performance is more sensitive to the thread divergence and the load balance due to its massive parallel nature.
finally conclusion. Um, in this paper, we we present we present PADDN an end-to-end -end framework to achieve real-time DNA execution on mobile devices. This paper proposed proposes a new pruning method to benefit from both high accuracy and hardware efficiency. This paper illustrated the PADDN outperform other state-of-art end-to-end DNA execution frameworks with up to uh, 40, 44 speed times speed up and no accuracy compromise. Uh, at the end of this presentation, I want to show you a demo that is based on our framework. We implement a high resolu re resolution model on Samsung S10. The upper in this video, you can see the upper video is input from the camera, which is 60, 64 by 64 pixels. The bottom video is the output video processed by high resolution model, which is 256 by 256. As we can see in the next one, the upper video is the the upper video is input from camera, which is gray video. The bottom vi video is the output video processed by coloring model, which is RGB video. The rest of video are for network style transfer model, which can add some filter effect into the raw input from camera. Okay, thanks and please let me know if you have any questions. Here is my email address, thanks.